so we I was walking back to the camp and after the uh, I was catching out of my peripheral vision movement in in the ridge above me and it was kind of a funny thing because uh, it, it was almost as if whatever was moving on the ridge kept just enough distance that kept me from uh, from getting a really good close look at whatever that it was. Alrighty guys, we're here tonight at uh, Mount Pisgah Cemetery. Uh, uh, uh. Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant, okay. We're here tonight at Mount Pleasant Cemetery uh, near the site of the 1982 uh, dogman attack in the land between the lakes. I'm here with Bart Nunley. Terry and Logan Littleton, Elijah Henderson, and Gabriel Henderson. It's a little past two o'clock in the morning and we're about to walk in to the actual site of the uh, incident. July 9th, July 2021. 9th. Yes, 2021. Uh, I paused for a minute because I hear bass off somewhere, like someone with a big bassy speaker somewhere. Heading up to Station 16. When you know it, all the bones are gone again. The other ones that were down there are gone. We, uh, we, there was a trail of them leading all the way up here. And how many of us we got? Six, I mean, seven people. And we can't seem to find a bunch of bones that were everywhere. Crazy. A day and a half ago. It's just crazy. Yeah. Are there any up there? Vertebrae. I'm keeping it with me too because I don't want to risk losing this if we're going to try that experiment. A real big femur is all about that we found down there. Nobody's seen them. Okay. 
I'm down in a hole. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be much down here though. The cornerstone. Uh, anything like that. All kinds of red brick. There's some rebar. said like be you free or something in total and we came back it's so crazy with the cistern being there and everything I just think this is the old pump out this is Myers self -care. oh yep Oh wow. Picture that. The old bone too. Yep. And there's a pipe right there. And the Indians used to uh, they would bury people around trees and they would do the here we are in LBL, down just beneath the 82 kill site, down by the lake. This is how thick the foliage is right now. Early May, and this is our view. So Elijah is going to blow the death whistle for us. Aztec the Aztec death whistle. Used to be used in human ritual sacrifice and in warfare. I'm not using it for human sacrifice just because it sounds like a scream. Thought I might get a good result.
No response. Over there. Hear it? No, I don't hear anything. It's it's something over there. Oh. Ah! Oh, man, that light scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's back there. Daryl Denton. Back there scaring everybody. Scaring everybody to death. I'm here with my camera. Thing was deadly, wasn't it? Right. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? that was I a, don't know. It sounded like a growl. Yep. That was crazy. It sounded like come from right over here, right? Yeah, right, right straight ahead of you. Here much because of the car. We should at least turn it off. It's a bird. I think. Hit it, Elijah. Right, Gab's got the whistle on. Oh, she got the whistle. What do you got? Powerful. Oh, yeah. ah! Strong. Ah! Y'all hear it? Yeah, yeah. Back in the 1930s and 40s. Yeah, I hear it. And then obviously wolves pretty much got turned extinct in most states. Right. They got frowned upon. So he stopped trapping. He makes this wolf lore. Well, then when wolves got reintroduced into these rural areas, of course, they start going after people's cattle again, their livestock and their pets. Mm -hmm. So now wolf trapping is allowed again. I want to use an electric vehicle to get me in, back in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the hunters now are using the, uh, the three-wheel or the side-by-sides. And they have so many of them that are electric now. Quiet. Real quiet. But I don't understand the legal basis of why that, you know. In Kentucky and Tennessee, you have handicapped hunters that are allowed to use that, but you're not allowed to use it in LBL. Yeah. They're 
don't make sense. Well, see, mine is I don't think it's fair. Roads hmm? in Tennessee. Yes, so you can mean you drive your, your, Even your. So. All right, guys, I'm out here at Colson Hollow Road. I've been gathering firewood for like an hour. Look how pretty this place is. It's a little windy. Uh, this is close to the spot that uh, Mr. Colson and his family saw the dog man in 1948. Beautiful spot. Doesn't look like anyone's been here for a long, long time. Let's go over here. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. Gathering firework woods hard work. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the car up there. It's way up there. Pretty good ways away. I saw this over here. We just had to check it out. All this moss. Thinking maybe there might be a cave or something over here. Let you guys check it out. beautiful we're up on top of a, a large hill see this is where all the firewood's at too wow they broke the tree to make that yeah, formation there. Yeah. Good air. That's a real nice air. Almost as good as that one I showed you a picture of. That's a nice one right there. Lady against that tree made an ass. That's a young dude. Oh man, I'd love to see these guys because they're friendly. They're the ones I had at the river. They're the ones at what? They're the ones I had at the river. Oh, okay. The river. They're all in there. This is definitely a place we need to come back and spend a little time in at nighttime. That's a really nice area. What's that down there? Is that a creek? Looks like a, a bottom or, right down in there. Like or is that a big creek. fallen tree? I don't know. Okay. Deep hollow down in there. Look at that. Yeah. Man, that's an awesome area. And I'm with Daryl Denton and Martin Groves. They don't file like that. That piece in between the fork. They place that. That's a marker going down in there. Right down in here for sure. Down in there for sure. Trying to see a big X, because I hope it is an X, because that's a genre. That's the ones I like. And they are very pretty. Looking for a damp tree for the ground. 
An arch? There it is right there. I'm looking for one pulled all the way over, holding hold down. Oh, okay. Well, there's an arch right there. Yeah, that's not where I'm, I'm talking about one, uh, uh, like, a, like one of these trees pulled over with something on top of it. To hold uh -huh. it down. Okay, I see. There's another arch right there. It looks it could be natural. Wind and ice. Yeah. You gather up on those and bend them. Forks aren't natural. A tree don't fall in the middle of a fork against a tree. I don't see any other markers though from here. I want to see a bent tree, like I said, pulled down with something on it. Right. That way it'll give us the guidance of where they're at. Where's the hell of a place to drop in here and research? Looks right. Like they're down in here somewhere. You know, a lot of places left to explore, so. Should be one close to those, but I don't see it. Is it moving at all? I don't know, bro. I think it might just be the shadow of the tree from the light he's got on this picnic table. Not sure. Made it to the top. Yes. Let's walk down here a little bit and I'll turn back. Alright. Let's do it. What is it? Is it a lens flare? I don't know. It's lens flare, honey. You sure? Yeah. I don't know. That looks weird. <laughs> Once again, down to the kill site. Stay back here with, with a bunch of our friends. 
Beautiful night, just pretty cold. Cemetery by the kill site. Seven or eight of us. Just walk down to the bunkers in there. Doing their thing up in the graveyard. Is that you, Matt? Okay, yeah, that's your life. <laughs> okay. Place is still just as eerie and mysterious as it was 20 years ago. It hasn't changed at all. My mom was standing on this side. Of it. I have never seen a skunk come that close to people. Get on out of here, Peppy. Peppy Le Pew. And it was a warm hand. It wasn't cold, but it was warm. Wow. And I turned, and when I didn't see anybody, I was Oh, my goodness. He went under my car. Under your car. <laughs> wow. Watch out, Chrissy. He's probably getting ready to come out from underneath my car. Well, I can't smell myself. It's you all that I have to smell there you all weekend. He's over <laughs> by your car now. He's under your car. Well, shit, I gotta get my bedding out. He's just trying to go home. <laughs> Where's your bedding? Oh, there you go. It's right there. I'm you. Go, go, shoot, shoot. <laughs> 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 oh, good times, good memories. I know. What's up with that? He came all the way up to the, almost up to the. <laughs> <laughs> Not that car. No. Yeah, you can't sit in that. Yeah. That's really possible. I mean, if someone's butt is big enough to sit in it, they ain't making it up no hill to hunt. <laughs> you probably shouldn't put that in the video. If you're setting a tree, if you're setting a chair on a cheap tree branch up in a tree, you might be a redneck. <laughs> and I believe, I believe, it's the tallest stack in LBL is about 30 feet. I believe it's the tallest one that remains. And I don't think it'll be there much longer. But one day it's just going to fall over. Rice is going to fall over. If you don't mind, I'd like to get a picture of you 
Inside. You think so? Let's check it out. Yeah. He sat there and looked at it. He couldn't see it. Finally, he saw it. He couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah, finally, he's seen it. But you know, a lot of people will look at something, they'll look right at something and not see it. Yeah. Okay, y'all, I know it's the middle of the day and it's probably not nothing, but I keep hearing off in that direction some weird sounds I've never heard before. I kept thinking maybe it was the trees squeaking or squ uh, swaying, but I'm not sure that it's not. It's just a different sound. Do you hear that? I hope that picks up. Okay, tell us what kind of snake that is. It's a red belly snake. And his belly's kind of a salmon pink color, but once he sheds, he's, uh, his be belly's as red as can be. That's it. That's it. It's an adult. They don't buy it. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That's it. Red belly, that's an adult. That's an adult? Yeah, they don't get much bigger. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what that sound is. I'm hoping it's just trees creaking. I hope everybody can hear that. I don't know what that sound is. I actually think I'm going to walk back towards it just a little bit. I just want to, there's a little offshoot this creek right here if I can get through it safely. Stop. Falling. I'm not going to go back it too far because I just don't know what I'm walking into. There really isn't any telling what I'm walking into. I will be safe. I'm going to turn the video off for just a minute and kind of figure out what I am walking into, where I'm going, and hopefully the guys will be coming this way soon. I'm usually not freaked out. I'm not too freaked out right now because I'm sure it's just a natural noise. Very windy. But the road we came in on is a closed road, so I would say there's probably not people back here. Um, I don't know. I just want to walk it a little bit, see if I see anything, see if I hear. There's the noise. Okay. I'm going to stand real still. gonna get past this rushing part of the creek so that maybe we can hear that sound I don't see any hogs or deer or any wildlife at all it's not saying that they're not here I'm just I don't see anything Okay, what kind of snake's that? Brown, and another name for it is the Decay's snake, D-E-K-A-Y, Decay snake. Its entire diet is uh, earthworms and slugs, 
just like the red belly snake they're in the same genus it's the storia is the genus and this uh, species is ritorum and the other one was called uh Ocipium maculata wow so that's the this is a big one yeah that's a it's full grown right yeah it's a big one this snake's about a foot long but that's a big one usually they're nine or ten inches but they're harmless they don't bite you just walk up to them and pick them up yeah gentle as can be he's warm he's been in his sun oh yeah yeah okay so there was a building here it had bathrooms in it yeah In no time. Doesn't take it long, does it? Yeah. Well, at least they baited this hog trap, right? Yeah. Yeah, they got some corn in there. I'm not going to get any closer because they, 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 this one's actually set. Yeah. And they got cameras out here. See if we can find them. Right there. See it? Yeah. Stay hog trap, 200 feet. Well, all right, let's move on back. Well, there you go. There's the first hog trap that's actually in service out here. his soul he has passed away he kept that secret and he never told my name he kept it secret and I still didn't didn't want to come out and tell anyone but I got a phone call and I was contacted by Elijah and Elijah thought I should come forward with my story and the one thing that also changed is that it, I my hunting partner had passed away <laughs> A goodly son. All right, here we go. I'm gonna find my baby. Oh, you're not gonna show gonna, us yet? I'm gonna let him see the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're gonna keep us in suspense. There's Dewey Edwards. The Dooster. The Dooster. Making his way out of the forest. And Joe and Jess are Jesse, way back down this Jesse road. Jess and Joe are coming right up the yeah, road over there. I see the flashlight coming this way. Shining light over here in these woods, baby. We can't see anything.
look up. Good place for a dog, man. Uh, oh, he hasn't showed yet. All right, we're down in LBL Creek walking and exploring. And <laughs> my wife stopped at the creek while me and my buddy went and explored a cemetery and she's done found an arrowhead. Be the first, first point we found in LBL. So can't wait to see it. Look at all that red. Yeah, a bunch of them. I've seen as many as 50, 60 turkey back here. Have you? Oh, yeah. Come through, come through here like a platoon. <laughs> I mean, you'll hear them, man. Turkey are not, They're not quiet. quiet when you get that many. That this hasn't stopped. It continues to to occur. There's been other deaths inland between the lakes, as recent as 2020, when we had someone that disappeared. And I, I've been told not to talk about it because it is an unofficial open case of two missing persons. Big ditch behind you. Elijah's gonna blast some sounds now. You dropped a battery earlier. Did you get it back in right? Oh, oh man. I can't put my name. Well, I can't start it. 
prematurely. Christian. All right, now we're ready to party. Let's party. We need to chop our beer bar. I know it. They need to walk. Pretty cool. He's a tight leg.
Sure is a beautiful day, ain't it, brother? Yep, beautiful day, nice trail, shaded. All right. Good friends, good company. My best brother with him. It's beautiful. to disclose to the public my, my brother Daryl and I here were doing some research and some follow-up on some tips that we had received in the land between the lakes concerning some dogman activity and different sightings and searching for tracks and such we had went to the area the immediate area of one of our old camps that we went to Daryl and I had been into the deep woods and uh, had been there on and off most of the day and it had gotten pretty close to the evening and got really dark on us when we had realized that we were surrounded in the woods where we were located and I mean this is not anything that either one of us had we were comfortable with we've been in the woods together so many times that it was just part of the course it was normal for us we knew the activity was there and we were there for that reason we knew that these animals were in there and uh, daryl i think i can't remember what started the dog first but i believe we started hearing the clicking <clears throat> of the areas it was coming from all in the areas around us in the woods. Right, up on the ridge. Uh, thanks for having me, Barton. Daryl Denton here with my brother, Martin Groves. We heard what sounded like tree knocks on the ridge. I had a feeling that they were there and so did Martin. And uh, we had actually drove back into the spot earlier that day and we had gotten out to eat a snack. It was late in the evening and we hadn't eaten in quite a while. We took, uh, got back in the vehicle and probably going about one mile an hour, took us sharp left onto a old gravel dirt road area. And quickly, I had my passenger window down, Martin was driving, I was in the passenger side of his vehicle and I looked to the right and right to the right was a deep ditch and there was a lot of grass and mm -hmm. sticks and different type of terrain in there and I seen a creature laying in there and it looked like it was ready to pounce on us. It had that look like it was like, like a cat does when it's trying to pounce on a toy or, or a mouse. And it was laying low and it was probably about eight foot long. It was silver gray and it was like glowing almost. Yeah. Very hard to understand what I'm saying, but it was glowing and it had a huge head. And the very eyes, frightening. Right. The eyes were very deep, like clear flashlights almost, maybe three or four inches deep, and it was looking right at me. It had like a mane, like a line around its head. And uh, I turned to Martin and looked, and Martin said, did you just see that? I said, how could I not? It's looking right at me. And we looked back, and Martin then tell them what you saw as we drove off uh, man you said it it was frightening this this thing was huge and it had a it had a head on it like something that you know it, it's just hard to explain isn't it about the size of half our windshield it, it was just huge and it was translucent 
Right. Almost and, cartoonish. It was so strange. It, it, you know, that's, that's how I felt, too, that it was almost cartoonish. And it, you know, we've seen all these movies, and we don't think that anything like this could ever exist. Right. But it was as if we were looking at, in that one movie, it was like we were seeing a predator. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. And this thing, it, it uh, as we begin to pass, this thing, I mean, it, 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 it sprung up, and it was as if it glided behind our truck, and I, I, don't, I don't know how to say it, Daryl. I mean, it was like I could see through it, yeah. but yet I could still see it. Right. And went up the hillside. And yeah, it, it just glided behind the truck. Its feet never touched the ground. And it was as if, you know, it sprung behind the truck, went into the field beside of me, and like lightning, it went right up the hill. It was just like, wow. I mean, you heard it. It's yeah. like it was, it sounded like a bulldozer. Breaking some trees. Breaking the trees and going, and going up, up and... to the highest peak in the devil's backbone. Yep. I mean, it was way up. Yep. And then I looked at Martin, and he said, man, I can't breathe. I said, what do you mean? Are you okay? And uh, he said, my throat is swelled together. It feels like it's swelling oh, together, man. and my tongue is feels like it's swelling together. And and then I had, my legs were tingling, and I had a kind of a sick feeling in my chest. And we probably proceeded maybe another tenth of a mile, and we stopped, and... I was really worried about him being able to breathe. I didn't know what I figured at that time that it must have done some type of, as they call it, it zapping us or whatever we would call it on a dog man. I, I believe like my good friend Barton Emily thinks, I believe it's a radiation type thing more than it is an infrasound. So it but, was it was just a and the smell that it did emitted from this creature that it, it, you know, and I hope folks can understand. I mean, you and I grew up in the country and I mean, we, we played around skunks and we, we knew what oh, skunk yeah. smelled. This was some type of a battery acidic acid smell that filled the cab of the truck. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't breathe my eyes and, and you remember your eyes began to flow like water yeah i was really and worried. mine swelled almost shut i was really and, uh, worried about martin and i was wanting to get us to safe territory as fast yes. as we could and we headed toward the paved area with, with street lights which was a good distance away but we were we were probably a good 25 miles yeah. from uh what we would consider to be safe in, in 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 the lbl and yeah. uh we just uh was, we drove as quick as we could it was pretty i was like i said i, I felt sick uh, but not nearly a, as bad as martin did i was worried about his breathing and and we we headed as fast as we could to the traceway they call it and get into the light and where i could see him and make sure he was okay and you know, the funny, the funny thing is, Daryl, about this, and, and you and I had talked about it before, uh, I've been hit with every type of military and police, uh, tear gas, and any type of deterrent that can be sprayed to, to, uh, uh, to subdue an assailant. And, I mean, this was, this was like bear spray three times worse. And, uh... I don't know, but it, it was a very terrifying ordeal that night. <clears throat> I remember this. I remember we weren't not going. We were not going to give up that night. We didn't come right. back to that exact area, but we continued to yeah. uh, stay within we, the area yeah, and, and um, keep know, looking. There was my worry was his condition of being able to breathe and. You know, even when we left there late that night, he was still having difficulty, not as bad as he was at first. But mm -hmm. there was uh, <clears throat> probably the strangest thing I've ever had happen to me as far as any type of creature. And I've been around many Bigfoot and had some strange things happen, but nothing like this thing. So 
Out of all the researchers I know, uh, besides Barton Nunley, uh, I hold you in the greatest esteem and just, I mean, I look yeah, up to I'm... you and I know the things that you have seen in your lifetime. And uh, I'm just glad I was there with you. Shoot, brother. I by appreciate my side. you, man. And I appreciate it. I love you, brother. I appreciate you. I love uh, you, too, man. We've been friends 41 years, and we've been through a lot. But that was, uh, I don't, you know, you're, my opinion, and there ain't anybody that I know that I think any more of than you and, and Barton Nunley. So, uh, There's one thing I would like to say before we cut our fire chart fireside chat off tonight I want everyone to know and realize where we're at tonight we had received a tip of some activity uh, deep along the devil's backbone and uh, following up on this activity we had decided to come in pretty deep tonight and uh, I do wish to discuss this and tell it you have to understand that we're not here trying to see anything. We don't want to see any activity from any type of creature, but we're going to go to try to collect hair samples. We're in here looking for tracks and for answers. And tonight we are actually in what I consider to be a very dangerous place. And I know that Daryl is oh, a yeah. little bit worried and stressed, and I am too. Yeah, I'm little, only really a little bit stressed because we've got activity all around us. We, uh, so. we have seen, we've had a sighting tonight, and we have activity. And we know that uh, we're not going to tell everything because uh, we're going to keep it to ourselves. But we have some strong activity, and as we are filming and yeah. talking tonight, Bart Nunley is actually pulling security for us yeah. and is watching our backs because we are in such a uh, we're in a dangerous area. volatile area we're in a right vulnerable now. Vulnerable area. We've got we have mul we, multiple sightings yeah. in this area right now, yeah. right this second. We know we've got three creatures that are watching us right now, so. and uh, so we're gonna call it a night and uh, help Barton do security and uh, we just wanted to share this fireside chat with you. Daryl, I'm glad to be here with you glad tonight. You, I'm brother. glad to be, you, here with, with glad to be here with Barton Nunley. Glad to be here with Barton Nunley too, man. Uh, we always been with you too. We're in the know. bowels of the beast. This is yeah. the three people, that the two people that I want to be with. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah, you guys. thanks for all the kind words and thanks, Martin, for coming on the channel again. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, we appreciate you. Everybody appreciates your willingness to tell what happened. Thank you, Barton. Appreciate it. Thank you, Barton, for having us. God bless you guys. God Thank bless you. Godspeed. Sound all right?
American tribes believe that this and the Bigfoot are both um, 
um, spirit beings that can exist transdimensionally. They are both in our world, and then when they choose to, they can um, find a portal, if you will, and go back into their own world or other dimension, and that this very nicely explains why one has never been captured or caught. Huge, huge black eyes. Um, and it, it proceeded to take a stance of extreme agitation and anger, and it, it, it spread its arms out, and it just, it just opened its mouth up and just howled and, and screeched. Um, I, it had claws. Uh, it had the pointed ears. It had, when it raised up and went sideways, I could see the canines coming out. I could see, you know, the, the snout coming out.